Good morning or good evening, wherever you might be. We can see lots of participants joining in, which is very exciting. Uh, definitely let us know with an emoji or reaction if you're here today and joining Ocean Generation for our live session. It's always very exciting and affirming when we're doing these kind of webinar styles to be able to see you participate and being able to see the presence of all the wonderful people around the world joining in today. Wonderful. Okay, so I think we're gonna get started. Um, we only have um, 45 minutes together today, um, and I know you've got a jam-packed weekend. Um, so I'll be sharing my screen with you um, so that you can see some of the wonderful things that we've got in store for you. Welcome, once again. <laughs> All right, well, hopefully you can see that. I'm Kavina, um, I'm here from Ocean Generation today. And hopefully you have tuned into the right session because I know you've got a huge schedule full of really exciting things. So you could have chosen to be by around the campfire or you could have chosen anything else, but you've chosen to be here today, which is wonderful. So thank you. Um, today, we're gonna to be talking about our ocean um, and taking collective positive action. So first of all, who are Ocean Generation? That's the one of the first things that we'll be covering. We're going to go on a little bit of a deep dive today. We'll be talking about our planet, um, our power, um, and our future, and thinking about what is your part to play in all of this. So who are Ocean Generation? Um, if anyone has heard of us before, please give us a thumbs up. Um, but otherwise, I'll, I'll let you know. So we are an organization that are empowering an inclusive movement to tackle ocean threats through science and storytelling. So what does that all mean? Um, it means that we're trying to be accessible to everyone and we're really focusing on young people such as yourself um, to make that change. We're doing that through behavior change. So really trying to change people's actions and mindsets um, and doing that through education, um, engagement, filmmaking, and all of that is backed by a lot of scientific credibility. So Joe, our founder, um, was the one that produced um, the documentary A Plastic Ocean um, and started the conversation around that. But now we're talking about all, all of the ocean threats um, that affect our ocean's health, um, but we're doing that in a way to inspire hope and create change. We do that through running primarily three programs. Um, I'll tell you about them briefly today because no matter what age you are, um, it's good to know about all of these. Um, and I know I, I for one have definitely played with um, uh, all of the programs that are outside of, I'm not in any of these age groups, but I love them all. <laughs> and I find that I learned from all of them. So our first one over here um, for ages three to seven is Earth Cubs. So you can have a look at that online. It's a play-based education platform where you can actually go into an ocean um, setting and be able to learn whilst you play. Then we also have Ocean Academy for ages five to 16. Um, and this is our interactive core education hub. And then we also have for ages 16 to 25, which is what we're gonna be doing a taster of today, which is our Wave Makers programs. This is where we accelerate social action um, and facilitate blue careers. So that's careers that affect um, and impact the planet. We're targeting young people because they make up 42% of the world's population. Um, probably most of you tuning in today are under the age of 25 and you are pretty much the majority of this planet and your lives will be most impacted by today's ocean's threats. So by positively engaging you, we're aiming to foster a sense, of, a sense of agency and leading to tangible behavioral changes and a desire for collective action. And what is a wave maker? So I'm sure you're wondering. Um, a wave maker is an individual committed to creating, coordinating, or contributing to positive change, however big or small. And that really is key. No matter what kind of action you're contributing to our ocean's health, you are a wave maker. So you are starting your journey today. Well done, congratulations. 
Before we dive in, when we're talking about our ocean, what are we talking about? This short video, and you might recognize a face in here, will tell you more. The importance of the oceans. They provide us with more than half the oxygen we need. Every second breath you take comes from the oceans. They absorb much of the carbon dioxide we produce. They are an important source of protein for billions of people on the planet. Every drop of water, indeed everything we drink, has come from the oceans. The ocean is our life support system. If that system becomes dysfunctional, then all living things on this planet will suffer. When you see Earth from space, you can see why it's called the Blue Planet. 71% of its surface is covered by the ocean, and the ocean is vital for all living things. Take two deep breaths. The oxygen that you took in in one of those breaths came from the ocean. Did you know that there is no new water made on Earth? The same amount cycles around constantly, evaporating from the ocean to form clouds. Rain falls from these clouds as fresh water, which eventually returns to the ocean once more. This water cycle is a closed loop that has existed for billions of years. Most animals and plants need water to survive. Without the fresh water the ocean provides, life on land would not be able to exist. That includes humans. Our bodies are 60% water. Water that came from the ocean. Water is life. The well-being of the ocean is vital for life on Earth. Without a healthy marine environment, we won't have a healthy planet, and that will affect us all. Keeping our ocean healthy is an important challenge for our generation. We all need to get involved. For ourselves, our friends and family, and every living thing that we share our planet with. Wonderful. So there's a lot of you joining in today. Um, and um, of course, it would be wonderful to hear your voice um, in, in this session. Um, so remember, you can always use the chat function on Zoom if you're having trouble on accessing any of the tools that we'll be using today. Um, but one of the tools we'll be using is Slido. Um, so you can use this um, QR code. So if anyone doesn't know how to use a QR code, you can use your phone's camera to um, direct the camera towards the QR code and it will it will open up a link for you. Or you can also join at slido.com with the hashtag ocean generation. There'll also be a link being pasted in the chat by Eric um, from Joti and um, from Scouts and um, in the chat right now. So you can also follow that link. So lots of ways to get involved. Um, but now I'd love to hear your voice um, and I would love for you to um, share what word does our ocean make you think of? So hopefully you should be in here now. And I can see that some people are getting involved already, which is wonderful. Mm, I definitely think of the word blue when I'm thinking of the ocean and life, my goodness. Not only does it sustain our life, but it's got so much life in there. Adventure, fishes. Vastness, yes, there's a lot of words around how big it is. 
how beautiful and mysterious, wonderful. I love these words because they are so varied and it shows how, how huge the ocean really is and what an incredible life source it is for us. It is a both um, interesting and curi curiosity, um, it sparks our curiosity, but it is also absolutely humbling um, in its mystery and how big it is. Wonderful, thank you. I'll leave it open, so do feel free to keep submitting. Um, so yeah, we'll continue to using it. And also do drop into the Zoom chat where you're, where you're dialing in from. I'd love to, to hear more about kind of the countries that we've got represented between us today. Um, and remember the chat function is yours to use too. Okay, so um, the first thing we're talking about when we talk about our ocean is how much, I know a, a lot of those words coming up um, was about life and nature and fishes. And our ocean really supports all of life on earth. It is home to thousands of plants and organisms and the ocean's biodiversity is astonishing. Scientists estimate that 91% of ocean species are still to be discovered. Um, and we need to understand how important the ocean is to our daily lives. And this will enable us to be continually motivated to protect it. I wanted to zoom into two animals that really fascinate me. I'm not sure about you, but I absolutely adore the blue whale. Um, it not only is the largest animal alive, but the largest to have ever lived. Um, blue whales have one of the loudest voices on earth and their call can be louder than a jet engine and has been measured at 188 decibels. It is thought that in good conditions, blue whales can hear each other across distances of, of up to 1,600 kilometers. That's probably me trying to shout out to one of you um, joining in on the call that far away. And I'm pretty sure you wouldn't be able to hear me. So that's Pretty incredible. And can you recognize this little fella? Um, it's a horseshoe crab. Um, and horseshoe crabs are not actually crabs. Um, they're from the family of scorpions and spiders, unlike actual crabs. If you check their abdominal area, you can see the striking and scary resemblance it has to a tarantula's one. But what's most fascinating about this ten-eyed creature is the fact that it is a true medical hero. Their uncommon blue blood has immune cells known as Limulus polyphemus, which are sensitive to toxic bacteria and can be used to test vaccines and drugs for dangerous bacterial toxins before products hit the market. The, this coveted blood has been used for nearly 20 years and has been vital to in testing COVID vaccines currently on the market. So very topical and obviously plays a huge part in healthcare. The next thing we say is that um, we, we talk about here at Ocean Generation, we say ocean, not plural oceans. We all must understand that what happens in one part of the ocean will affect the other parts too. So you just saw in the video that I shared now that all of our water is connected. All of the water that exists is in a closed loop. So it doesn't matter if you don't even live near the ocean. Um, I know I don't, I live in London in the middle of a big city, but I've got streams and rivers and estuaries and every all of these water sources that we have are connected and everything affects the ocean. We all know about the world's five oceans that we've learned about in school, Atlantic, Pacific, Indian, Arctic and Antarctic. However, thinking about them as five separate oceans is not helpful. So we prefer here to call it, to refer to our ocean as one. And we are all part of this giant single and interconnected ocean. So we're gonna think about our impact on the ocean. There are five broad ways that human action threatens the ocean. And these are climate change, pollution, coastal infrastructure development, resource extraction, and daily ocean use. We're gonna be zooming in on two of them, the first two. So the first one is climate change. Um, and this can be a bit of an overwhelming one to talk about, but, if, if you don't know, if you, if you haven't been familiar with what climate change is, um, it's primarily around the gas, the greenhouse gas carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide absorbs some of this heat from the sun's rays, but it redirects heat in all directions. Some of this heat gets trapped in the atmosphere and it never escapes. And in this way, the earth gets hotter. Due to the high amount of carbon emissions caused by the burning of fossil fuels, the ocean has 
consequently been absorbing higher amounts of carbon dioxide too. More than 90% of the heat from the global warming from global warming is stored in the ocean. And as the ocean gets warmer, the ice caps melt and that causes sea levels to rise. By 2100, they might be a meter higher than they are now. And I'm sure this is something that you are all, some of you on this call are experiencing in your countries at this time as well and in your communities. A warmer ocean also means less oxygen. And at the same time, warmer water means warm, warmer water means that living organisms need more oxygen to survive. Have you heard of coral bleaching? This is when the coral dies. 31% of reefs were affected by it in 2016 compared to only 8% in the 1980s. That is a huge jump. Ocean acidification is another big threat. So higher levels of carbon dioxide in the ocean can form carbonic acid. If ocean waters are too acidic, some marine organisms like corals and oysters will struggle to form carbon, calcium carbonate shells and skeletons. And it also makes it harder for fish to breathe. The next one we're gonna zoom in on is pollution. One of the biggest forms of pollution and probably the most widely known is plastic pollution. Every year, over 8 million tons of plastic enter the ocean. And guess who's responsible for that? Unfortunately, it's us again, us humans. <laughs> um, and I just wanted to highlight a few facts from this slide. Um, the first one is that 80% of plastic in the ocean comes from the land. That means that the plastic that is ending up in the ocean has passed through our human hands and has ended up because of improper waste management system or the fact that it probably shouldn't exist in the first place. And then this one really gross, grosses me out, which is that we ingest four times two blocks worth of Lego um, plastic every month. Oh, I don't know about you, but I definitely don't want to be eating Lego. Um, but unfortunately, that's going what's going into our bodies every month. Um, then the last one is that uh, there are a thousand rivers that account for 80% of global river plastic poll pollution into the ocean. Again, that's going back to what we were talking about both in the video and earlier today, is that all of our water systems are connected. So you do not need to be living near an ocean to be experiencing and, and being connected to that. The next one is coastal infrastructure development. So the next three I'll just go through um, in kind of top line. So these are buildings near the coastline. Um, 2.5 billion people live within 100 kilometers of the coast in densely populated areas. And again, I'm sure most of you, um, are quite a lot of you kind of dialing in today, are living in, 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 in these kind of spaces and communities. And as these cities develop close to waterways, the activity from humans like sewage, polluted runoff water, et cetera, can damage marine life and ecosystems. The next one is resource extraction. So more and more people rely on fish and other seafood as their primary source of protein. Today, it's approximately 3 billion people. This demand has led to a boom in commercial fishing and over a third of the world's fish stocks are overexploited. We need to allow fish stocks time to regenerate and grow. Daily ocean use. So our ocean is always being used from cargo being shipped to passenger traffic for travel. Our ocean noise from human activities like shipping, blasting and drilling can be deafening to sea creatures, stopping them from communicating with potential mates like our lovely whale earlier their offspring or feeding partners. So let's talk about our future because it's not doom and gloom. We're not that we're not about that at all at Ocean Generation. We know that everyone can play a part in, in creating this solution. And we've witnessed firsthand how the ocean can heal itself during the pandemic. That's all we need is everyone doing something towards supporting the ocean. So this is about our future. And our fascination with the ocean needs to turn into a crusade to save it. So as Ocean Generation, we support the call for regeneration zones, the UN's 30 by 30 mission to protect 30% of our ocean by 2030. And we are one of the UN decade of the ocean partners as well. So what is who, what is the power of you? Um, going back to the fact that you, most of you on this call today are gonna to be making up that majority, nearly majority statistic that I was talking about. You make up nearly 42% of the world's population if you're under 25. And you have so much power in your hand. So 
this the I, this is one of my favorite graphics because it shows and this is all backed by science and this is about your circle of influence so very very close to your actions and what you do as an individual these are your habits your behavior your decisions if you start changing these these will then start amplifying into your next circle of influence which is around your community what do we talk about when we talk about our community we're talking about your friends, where you work, where you volunteer, where you go to school. These are your communities, and this is where your changes can be amplified. Next, we have our political power and sphere of influence. This is around where you vote, where you spend your money, and if you're in involved in any campaigns. And this can be then further amplified when we're talking about building movements. Um, so things like Black Lives Matter, Me Too, all of these successful movements that we've seen in the last few years um, and the ones that have gained so much traction have been started by individual people just like yourself. So you do hold a lot of power. We, we're also talking about in this global sphere of influence, either social media, and this is where we really um, start amplifying our voice. But it all starts at the center with you. So, what I would love for you to do now is that there are two steps to this next exercise. Um, I would love for you to join. And again, there will be a link coming into the chat or you can scan this QR code in step one. What we want to do is uncover what are your personal values? So what motivates you to get out of bed in the morning and to do things um, that you wouldn't, that you have to exert energy into? Um, so if you follow this link, I will give you exactly three minutes um, to choose um, 10 values and don't choose any more than 10. Otherwise, um, the next steps in the personal values assessment becomes a bit long, basically. Um, and what we're trying to do is whittle down the values to your top three values. And this wonderful website and tool helps us do that. So step one is I will give you three minutes to choose um, and whittle down your values into your top three. And then you'll also discover your absolute top number one value that you hold dear and central to you. Once you have uncovered that um, using this um, website, then do step two. So go back to Slido and you can then report back your top value. So I'll go back to that slide and I will give you exactly three minutes starting now. Um, let me know if you've got um, any issues and maybe Eric, um, if you can let me know if there are any issues that are coming up in chat but your three minutes starts now. Oh, brilliant. So remember to actually do the, um, questionnaire on the website, which will allow you to discover what your top value is. Some of you are absolutely racing through. This is brilliant. <laughs> the other thing I forgot to mention is that there are no right or wrong answers in this. You should really go with your gut um, and just go with what you hold dear and what matters to you. Um, and there's absolutely no right or wrong answer. There's no one value that is better than another. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> there's just lots of different things that motivate different people. And this tool is about unlocking that. Remember that the tools that we share today, um, they're yours to keep. Um, and you can always come back to this. We as people are never static. And I'm sure that even if I took the test today, my top value today might be different to my top value in a year's time. So it's always worthwhile checking in and using things like this to reflect on what matters to you. Wonderful. 
got one more minute. I like that someone has said we should not pollute our ocean. Always good to have a reminder in there. Thank you. <laughs> And thank you for being so open and sharing back. I really appreciate that. Yeah, it, should, it will come out with your first, with your top three as well. So it makes sense to have a few, but we're just sharing back our top value here. Wonderful. And do note these down for yourself. It's for you to keep. Wonderful. If you're still um, kind of doing the values assessment, feel free to do that in the background and then do submit your top value when you have it. Um, but we'll kind of move on with the presentation today. So you do have your top value now. Now the next thing I want you to do, and don't worry, all will be revealed on where we're heading with this exercise. The next thing I want you to think about is what skills um, are you good at? Um, what things do you have in your... Um, kind of, yeah, in, in, what capabilities do you have within yourself that you have been learning and building across your lifetime so far? This is sometimes a little bit tricky to think about. I know I struggle to think if someone asked me what my skills are, I'm not sure where to begin. But a question that usually helps me is that if I start thinking about, hmm, what have people complimented me on maybe recently? So if you think about that for yourself, so maybe your friends always turn to you for, um, what to do in the weekend. Um, so that means that you're probably quite good at researching or knowing what's what's out there, but you're also very good at planning. Um, it might be that people always come to you when they've got an issue or something that they have a problem with. And that means that you're probably very good at listening, but also communication. So these are a few examples of the kinds of skills that come up for people, but I'd like you to write down your top three skills for yourself. What, what are you good at? And feel free to put it in the chat, to be honest, because you know something what we don't do enough is talk about what we're good at <laughs> and actually be able to share that with people. So this is a place that rate yourself <laughs> and we'll give you high fives back. Brilliant. So you should have now your top value and you should have um, your shortlisted a few skills that you know that you're good at. Now, what we're going to be doing is unlocking our superpower. Now, it doesn't matter if you have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm going to explain it. So, so far, we've got we've talked about our skills and our values. Now, what we want to try and do is think about our skills when they are powered by our values. What do I mean by this? So we could be practicing our skills in any context. So take the first line as an example. So this is I'm going across here. And um, so this skill of researching can be applied um, in so many different contexts. Um, you might be researching for um, maybe some kind of like business proposition or for a consultancy or something like that. Um, but there's so many different contexts that someone can use their skill of researching. However, and this is what we want to get you to start thinking about as wave makers, is that can you think about your skill as being powered by your values? And when you start doing that, that is when you're really unlocking your power. And that is your superpower that you can go out into your life with, basically. Um, and by powering your skills through your values, you will be leading a more meaningful life and somewhere that you are able to commit to with your full heart and soul. And everyone deserves that. So um, just taking again that first line as an example. So say, for example, that person that's really, really good at researching, their top value was health. Um, so this sub, this district person, um, their power would be analyzing data potentially. So they could be analyzing data to be able to understand more about healthcare systems and furthering um, health for their for themselves, their family members, and maybe something that they really care deeply about. Now this is where this the soup, your superpowers are so unique to you because if you gave me data to analyze. I would say, no, thank you. That is not something I even am good at or I even care about that much. But for someone out there who care, who is very good at researching and who's powering that by their value of health, that is where they're unlocking their superpower. Let's take another example. So do have a look through these all go across. So um, this is kind of, um, should hopefully start steering you in the direction of 
thinking about your skills as being powered by your values. But another example is, say, for example, that your one of your top values was justice. So you care about fairness and equality and the fight for justice. And your skill is photography. Now, we all know that anyone can be photographing any matter of subjects, um, and it could mean make for quite a meaningless career. Maybe this person was already um, looking at doing kind of fashion edit editorial photo shoots, but actually, is that furthering their value of justice? However, if they think about their skill of photography as being powered by their value, maybe they're doing something like photojournalism, and hey, they've got much more meaningful outcomes and they, that, that they're unlocking their power. Now, it's really great to think about these superpowers in the real world. So I just wanted to talk you through a well-known um, and famous example. And this is someone that we've heard from earlier today. Um, so this is Sir David Attenborough. Now, we know that his values, um, well, we can maybe take a, a good guess at what his values might be. So these might be his top three values might have come out as being maybe adventure. So he's always kind of seeking new adventures. He's um, He values passion. Um, so a, a very in, huge interest and in deep dive into um, an area of knowledge. And then he also values growth. So constantly being challenged um, and being pu pushed out of your comfort zone. However, then his skills, um, and this is if you think back to Sir David Attenborough, isn't hasn't always been the person that we know today. When he first started off, um, you know, he was behind um, in in kind of the crew of of, of television rather than in front of the camera, um, and he his he started off in a very different path. And at that time, he might have said that his skills were around leadership, being a natural historian, and and around television. Now, if he's powering his skills through his values we can see that he has really unlocked a career that has been centered around his power. Not only is he a presenter, so he's able to really use those leadership skills to get people around a message. He's also able to put that passion with a nat being a natural historian and become a documentary maker. So being able to share that passion with people. And then finally, you know, anyone can be presenting um, and, and being sharing, sharing their knowledge, but he is a storyteller and he's become a storyteller by using television as a means to kind of grow and challenge that medium of being able to share um, his passion. So hopefully this will help you start unlocking what your superpower is. And if you feel like you have you're, you're now thinking, oh God, I really do, I understand this now and I I'm, I'm understand what my superpower could be. Do share that in the chat because we'd love to hear more. So finally, we want you to take five actions for your future. And by your future, I'm really saying it's our future. So first of all, if you like this, you will absolutely love our full deep currents workshop. So this is for our workshop for 16 to 25 year olds. And the next one is going to be online on Tuesday, the 6th of December um, at 2 p.m. Um, and that's British, that's UK time. Um, what is this workshop all about? Um, so this is this what you've experienced today is just a short taster of what we really do in that full three hour workshop. So in that workshop, we take a deep dive into what ocean threats, particularly around pollution, and we start developing a campaign as a group on um, how to take action on, on something that you care about. Um, we leave the workshop thinking, um, and we share lots of resources around um, how to get into more meaningful careers, and again, how to use your superpower to, to be able to do that. Some of the feedback from previous sessions has been from Zoe over here. So it's not very often that I see a workshop and think I'm going to do this one. I like this because it's about real change and changing people's lives. And then Iwara said that I didn't realize that I could do things like leadership and networking until you pointed out how my skills can apply to those areas. And figuring out the everyday things that we can do to help our ocean has been really interesting. So in case you needed any more, um, convincing you can also see what Zaina thought of this workshop but if you're interested enough which I'm sure you are you can use this QR code to sign up there will also be a link coming into the chat now um, so that you can um, follow that and sign up on Eventbrite um, and I hope to see you a lot a lot of you there and hopefully you can have a chance to introduce ourselves properly face to face the second action you can take is that we would love for you to be able to use your superpower to take action on ocean threats and you can do this by using the hashtag OG Wavemaker. 
what do I mean by taking action? So it could be so many things. Um, and, and remember to be used thinking about how your superpower is, is central to that action. So you could um, share what you've learned today with friends. You could start a petition. You could write a letter to your MP, write a blog, host a film screening, write an article, attend a protest. But what does your superpower look like in action? If you do, if you do take on any action, definitely share it back with us on social media with the hashtag OG Wavemakers so we can see all the wonderful things that you're doing um, and be part of this ocean generation. You will, a very, very easy step to take as well um, is that just by following us on Instagram, um, so the first 30,000 followers that we get, we will be planting a mangrove in Madagascar. Um, and this is part of the mangrove mandate. We do this to protect our ocean. Um, and as you can see, there's lots of more information here. Um, if you go on our, on our Instagram account, there's a whole story highlight about mangroves as well. And again, you can use the QR code to follow that or there'll be a link in the chat. Then you can also register your interest in becoming a wave maker leader. What is a wave maker leader? You've only just heard about being a wave maker. Now, let me tell you. So a wave maker leader is, and I'm sure we've got quite a few of you on the call today, is someone that is able to maybe use their skills in leadership um, to be able to spread the message um, of, of becoming a wave maker and some of the things that we've covered today and being able to share that with your peers. So other 16 to 25 year olds. In spring of 2023, we will be launching an incredible pack of facilitation tools, guides, training materials. And if you want to be the one of the first to have exclusive access to this, definitely follow the QR code or the link that's coming in the chat right now um, and fill out that form so we can make sure to keep you in the loop. Um, but this is a very, very exciting thing that we're, joined, we're gonna be launching in 2023. And it means that you can be in charge of spreading that message. Finally, um, of course, we would always love any support to continue the one the work that we're doing, including this workshop that we're running today. Um, if you if you can and if you are able, we would love for you to fundraise for us. So again, you can follow the QR code here, or you can follow the link in the chat. There's all kinds of ways that you can fundraise for us. You can sign up for a challenge event. You can fundraise at your school. Um, if you're working, you can fundraise with your business. Um, you can also organize your own event. Um, and you can donate. Um, there's also on our fundraising page, you can see the current partners that we're working with um, and see how we kind of recognize them online as well. That brings us to the end. Um, and I would love for you to just to go back to Slido um, and be able to fill out the survey at the end. It's just two short questions that will help me understand if we've done our job today. So thank you so much. I think we have got a bit of time left over for questions. Am I right, Eric? Yes, that's correct. Amazing, brilliant. And I know one of the things that you'll be waiting for, um, and um, you know, thank you for participating in this session for that reason. So you have, congratulations. You have started your journey to becoming a wave maker. And your challenge code for this session is um, WZMQA. If we went through any of those ways to take action too quickly, remember you can go back to your um, Jota Joti um, page and there's one, there's a special static page dedicated to becoming a wave maker. And all of the actions that we outlined today, including some extra content, um, is able to be accessed there. Um, and if you've got any friends that were not able to tune in today or any other scouts um, that weren't able to tune in today, do share the link with them because this session is recorded and they will still be able to take part in um, the Slido until the end of the weekend. So definitely do that. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, any questions do let, let me know. Um, a question that we get commonly get asked just to kick it off is that, um, one of the questions we get asked is what are mangroves and why are they so important? So mangroves are oddly looking and robust trees and they're found in tropical areas around the world. And just like coral reefs, they are true storm barriers protecting land from floods. They filter pollution and absorb large amounts of carbon dioxide, which we were talking about earlier today in the, under the threat of climate change. And actually it's even more than rainforests. 
So they're an absolutely brilliant resource and that's why we invest in these as well. I'm gonna stop sharing just to see if there are any questions that have come up in the chat, but Eric, maybe if you can help me moderate these as well. Yes. Oh, the chat is uh, labeled from participants. Yeah. So you're yes. able to also um, submit any questions um, via the Slido. Um, so maybe I'll just have a check there to see if anyone's um, asked any questions. Okay, so someone has asked about um, the activity code that you receive. Um, so that's the challenge code so that's been shared with you so far. And my name, thank you for asking, is Kavina. Um, I did say that at the beginning, but um, some, sometimes it can be missed. But yeah, I'm Kavina, um, and I'm the head of inclusion and outreach at Ocean Generation. Um, and then, are you all right, Eric? Do you mind just sharing the challenge code again? Because I think a few people have missed it. Yes, we can share it again. Uh, we can share on the screen or also on the chat. So I'll drop in the chat. Yeah, that would be brilliant. Um, so it's coming in the chat and I'll share the, my screen as the final um, slide as well. Um, and thank you so much for your time and energy today. And remember, this is not the end of our journey with you. Do follow us on Instagram and do feel free to kind of continue the conversation there and engage with us in, in the ways that fit you. Um, but yes, thank you so much for joining. Great. Eric, shall I leave it with you to wrap up? Yes, I, we can close the, the webinar now. So thank you, everyone. Thank you so much again. Bye-bye. <laughs>